Now at 9, we have a big severe weather threat rolling through during the overnight hours tonight. Plus, a warning from Joplin fire officials about what could come after the storm. The city of Joplin announces a new housing assistance program that helps provide financial assistance for down payments or closing costs up to $40,000. I'm Samantha Walker, and we'll have that story coming up. The four states most watched news starts now. This is KOAM News at 9 on Fox 14. I'm Tanya Bach. Mother Nature returns with a vengeance. Severe storms are moving in tonight. Let's go straight to Chief Meteorologist Doug Hetty with a look at where we stand now. Yeah, they're not far from moving into the area. This is our highest severe weather threat that we have seen actually in several years. We have to go back to the May of uh, 2019. So in the yellow is a uh, level two out of five level three out of five, level four out of five, level five out of five. So our Kansas and our Oklahoma County is of course the highest threat for severe weather. We have storms starting to work in. They're just west of the region. You can see they're starting to push into Yates Center, Fredonia, Neodice. You can also see a couple tornado warnings which are starting to pop. So uh, make sure you keep it here. We're also gonna be streaming on the KOAM YouTube page plus on the KOAM Plus app as we go through uh, probably about the next five hours. I think these are gonna work through fairly quickly. I think after one o'clock in the morning, things will start to calm down. Already Chautauqua County near Sedan, we have a tornado warning. So uh, if you live in Fredonia, Neodice, Independence, Caney, Coffeeville, keep this in the back of your mind. Start to watch these storms as they begin to work in. Plus we have some additional ones just to the west of Tulsa and all this is going to be heading toward us as we go through the next several hours. So it's going to be a loud night. We have a pretty good tornado threat. Watch these guys driving east. So here's in about an hour driving into the region. Here's midnight, numerous little supercells. So we do have that tornado threat. Of course, we're going to keep you updated. It's Lindsay Gaffney and I, meteorologist Lindsay Gaffney and I, we're going to be on top of it for you for now. Back to Tanya. All right, thanks, Doug. Now, if you do not have a safe place in your home, community shelters are your best bet during a tornado. To find the closest shelter to you, head on over to our website at koamnewsnow.com, and there we have a list of all the shelters in the four states open to the public during severe weather. If you click on the alert day bar on our website, you'll also see live radar and information on how to follow our weather coverage, social media, and YouTube. Well, after severe weather strikes and you've made sure you and your family are safe, you might get the urge to inspect the damage to your property and your neighbors. However, it's important to take things slow to make sure it's safe. Joplin fire officials say high winds can knock down trees and blow in debris that can cover up hazards. Well, the big thing is their own personal safety. Uh, there's power lines down, there's trees hanging, uh, all sorts of hazards out in the road and, it, and things that could hurt anybody uh, very quickly. And so we just encourage people to be cognizant of their own whereabouts and their own surrounding space to make sure that they don't get injured. Officials also say you should be aware of hazards in your home like exposed nails and broken glass. Well, you can be the first to know about the latest developments in the weather with the KOAM Skywatch weather app. It'll send severe weather updates straight to your phone. You can also view a live radar to stay ahead of the storms. It's available on every app store free of charge. The city of Joplin is bringing back its home buyer assistance program. KOAM Samantha Walker has more on what this program offers and what the city hopes it does. The City of Joplin has announced the creation of the Joplin Home Buyer Assistance Program 2. The program was originally offered during the city's tornado recovery efforts. Now the city is bringing it back using funds from the American Rescue Plan Act grant. The city says the purpose of the program is to improve opportunities for home ownership for low and moderate income families. We always have a need in Joplin to, to provide more affordable housing. With the economy the way it is, with um, just the, the cost of living increases lately. Anything that you can do to help get a family into a home that they own, that they can be proud of and start building equity, it's just a great, a great assistance for them. Program funding can be used to provide financial assistance for a down payment and closing costs up to $40,000. It's just a great um, benefit for any size family, low income, get you in a house you can own. 
The president of the Ozark Gateway Association of Realtors says housing programs like this can help make home buying more affordable and also help real estate in the area. It will help sales in the city of Joplin. You know, we don't have a lot of homes currently on the market, so maybe this will encourage sellers to list their homes. I do think this will, of course, encourage buyers to come out and put offers on these properties that we've had um, that maybe have set a little bit um, that might qualify again for the program. She says she's already had several families reach out about the application. Applicants are encouraged by the city to talk with their preferred home mortgage lender to see if they're a good fit for the program. Reporting in Joplin, Samantha Walker, KOAM News. The city of Joplin says the program will remain open as long as funding is available or until the application deadline closes in 2026. You can learn more about how to apply on our website at koamnewsnow.com. With May marking National Mental Health Awareness Month, psychologists say prioritizing your mental health at your place of work could improve your quality of life both in and outside of the office. Coming up, experts cite tips on how to reduce stress and how to find a sense of purpose and more. Many of us spend a lot of time working away at our jobs and with May ushering in Mental Health Awareness Month, some psychology experts say it's important that the places we spend 40 or more hours at each week are not having a negative effect on our wellness. Chris Mayo takes a closer look at what companies can do to promote better workplace mental health. No matter what you do for work or how good you are at your job, it's normal for everyone to get overwhelmed from time to time while on the clock. Everyone has their breaking point. But with May marking National Mental Health Awareness Month, psychologists say prioritizing your well-being at your workplace could improve your quality of life in and outside the office. In terms of the factors that influence the mental health of employees, I think the biggest factor is stressors in their work environment. So, especially stressors that employees have no control over. Well, some people are prone to handling stress better than others. There's the personality trait of hardiness, and um, people who are high in hardiness, they feel like they have control over their environment. Thomas Britt of Clemson University says managers can take active roles in helping their employees develop strategies to keep them from buckling under the pressure. You can teach um, individuals and employees to, um, to try to take more control over their environment where they're able to. You can help them see the meaning in what they're doing and you can train them to get experience handling multiple tasks at once. When it comes to younger employees in Gen Z, psychology experts say it's important for many to feel like what they're doing at work is making a difference. Britt thinks companies that help their workers feel seen and heard can positively influence workplace mental health and this can help businesses in the long run. The organizations that show this high level of supportive climate are going to be the ones that attract the highest um, quality recruits. Chris DeMeo, Fox News. New parents don't know enough about the general screening of their newborn, and in particular, cystic fibrosis. A study by the Lurie Children's Hospital of Chicago found parents have uncertainty about what to do following an abnormal test result, and many schedule a follow-up that's too far in the future. Doug is next with a complete look at your forecast. Hey guys, meteorologist Doug Hetty. Of course, we have severe weather, which is working into the region. I'm actually still setting up graphics here, uh, but uh, we have tornado watches out really for most of the night across the region. And we have severe thunderstorms, which are rolling in at this point in time. We're going to get this started for you right now. All right, let's dig in. So in the purple are tornado watches which are in effect. Uh, I, I do think eventually northeastern Oklahoma, also extreme southwest Missouri, northwest Arkansas. You guys will get into a watch, but it's going to take a little bit of time because the storms are going to be lagging behind just a little bit. But you can see the severe thunderstorm warning. So we're looking at Allen, Neosho, uh, Sliver, Labette, Montgomery, Wilson, Woodson, Greenwood, uh, Elk, and then Chautauqua County we have a tornado warning. So if you live in our western counties, you really want to start to pay attention as these storms are really rolling in. We have a dry line, which is kind of firing off. That gives us lift. 
is firing off our storms out to the west of Salina to Hutch. So all these storms ahead of it are kind of in the warm sector, the juicy air mass. And in fact, it's going to intensify as we go through the overnight hours tonight. So you can see the new severe thunderstorm warning. All these guys are starting to roll in. If we look at Pittsburgh, we look at Joplin, Neosho, Miami, Carthage, you guys are still an hour and a half, two hours away, and then we'll start to get in the storms. But look how electric these guys are. A ton of lightning within these storms. Greenwood, Elk, Chautauqua counties. We're going to go ahead and zoom in. Let's take a little bit of a tour. So the severe thunderstorm warning, this is until 1030 p.m. This is for winds. 60 upwards to 70 miles per hour. And then of course we have uh, large hail, inch, inch and a half size hail. So starting to get into Yates Center at this time. Iola, you guys are on the doorstep. Chanute, you're on the doorstep. We can go down to Fredonia, Neodiche. You guys are getting into the action right now. Let's track a little bit farther south. Here's Montgomery County, Independence. You got Coffeeville, you got Caney in the southwestern side of the county and then we do have a tornado warning this cell uh, across chautauqua county which is pushing off toward the north and to the east lindsay do you have anything new on that tornado warning no, nothing new. okay nothing new so this is moving north and east so the better shot if this can hold rotation is going to roll into wilson county let's track farther south let's go into oklahoma so here's bartlesville you have a tornado warning here just to the southwest of bartlesville so we want to watch those as they push off toward the north and to the east. But again, severe thunderstorm warnings starting to fire off. We can look at our tornado warning. So let's go down here. You see where the brighter green is here wrapped around. This is a rain wrapped tornado. Uh, you got the green, then you got the red inside this little donut hole. So that is showing us a rain wrapped tornado. All this is going to be heading east. You can see the individual storm tracks off toward the north into the east uh they're moving pretty good 40 45 miles per hour let's go through time so here's your future radar again on the future radar it doesn't mean exactly this is going to be at the time that you're going to have a storm it gives you an idea it's an algorithm it's a mathematical equation here's 10 30 storms getting into fort scott pittsburgh columbus oswego you can see down toward Delaware County, J, all starting to get showers and thunderstorms, but the most intense line will be Iola, Chanute, back toward Independence, and also Nowata. Here it comes, driving east. Here's midnight. You're clearing out on the Kansas side now. On the Missouri side, we have intense storms, Nevada, Lamar, Stockton, Mount Vernon, Carthage, Joplin, Neosho, uh, getting into McDonald County. So it's at this point in time, that are southern counties that aren't under a watch right now will get into a tornado watch. This continues to drive east. Here's 1.30 in the morning. Most of the area at this point in time is in your go to bed circle, meaning we're looking pretty good. Any severe weather will be to our south and to our east and then all gone by two or three o'clock in the morning. So a lot to watch tonight. Of course, we're streaming on the KOAM YouTube channel. We're streaming on the KOAM Plus app on our website. And of course, right here, Fox 14 and also KOAM. Tanya? Well, coming up, picking the perfect running mate. The former President Trump needs to select a running mate and that decision could come relatively soon. I'm Doug Luzader in Washington. We'll have more on some of the candidates just ahead. After years of delays, Boeing is going to have to wait a little longer to launch its new Starliner spaceship as the crew scrapped the launch originally planned for 934 in just a few minutes. The aerospace giant decided to cancel the launch two hours before schedule because of rocket issues. A rescheduled launch date has not yet been announced. Well, there's an alert involving some popular snacks. Hormel Foods is voluntarily recalling two planters products over possible listeria concerns and potentially fatal contamination. The recall includes the four ounce packages of planters honey roasted peanuts with a best buy date of April 11, 2025 and 8.75 ounce cans of planters deluxe slightly salted mixed nuts with a best buy date of April 5, 2026. The products were shipped to both Publix and Dollar Tree distribution warehouses. 
Well, the summer travel season kicks off at the end of the month. Millions of Americans are making vacation plans and figuring out how to pay for those trips. Christine Lazar reports. Deanna Pert is returning from a trip and will be headed out again this summer for a cruise. I'm excited, but I'm dreading paying for my ticket. She saved up, but admits the vacation will cost a little more than she has, and that extra will be debt on a credit card. I want to enjoy my life, therefore we have to have vacations to enjoy time. So. Even if that means tightening the belt. Yeah, I mean, it's worth it. Others also believe it's worth it. In a bank rate survey, 36% of people say they're willing to go into debt for their vacation, and many plan to put it on a credit card. I don't want to tell people they can't have any fun, but I do worry about the high cost of credit card debt. Bank rates Ted Rossman says that's because people who don't pay off the card face interest rates of about 20%. According to TransUnion, the average American is carrying more than $6,000 in credit card debt. If you're only making minimum payments towards the average balance at the average interest rate, you're already going to be in debt for more than 18 years and pay close to $10,000 in interest. Ben Cohen and Emily Fishman are traveling for work and don't have plans to take a personal trip this summer. The two are avoiding debt by staying local. We just kind of like get our joy from, you know, what we have right in front of us as much as we can. They're not alone. 12% of people surveyed tell Bankrate they too are planning a staycation this summer. Christine Lazar, CBS News, Los Angeles. 28% of Americans say they're not taking a summer vacation because they can't afford it. Well, Tulsa neighborhood is on the hunt for the owners of these donkeys. Their story up next. A Tulsa neighborhood is on the hunt for a donkey owner. Two donkeys keep escaping their pens and running around. A neighbor said they are probably thirsty and hungry. She says the animals are generally well taken care of, even though no one knows who owns them. The previous owner died last year and now neighbors don't know who to call when this happens. The neighbor says the donkeys return to their pen at night, but she's worried about them running into traffic during the day. 30 more minutes of news, weather and sports is coming your way. It was audition a weekend for potential presidential running mates. We take a look at the top contenders. Plus authorities are searching for a suspect in a weekend Pittsburgh shooting. You're watching the Four States Most Watched News. This is KOAM News at 9 on Fox 14. I'm Tanya Bach. Authorities in Pittsburgh are searching for a suspect who they say was involved in a shooting early Sunday morning. The Crawford County Sheriff's Office was notified after a man, 34-year-old Keith Mitchell of Pittsburgh, went to Ascension via Christie Hospital with a gunshot wound around 2 a.m. yesterday. Deputies determined the shooting happened on South 220 Street by the Meadowbrook Mall. Mitchell is expected to survive. And now authorities are looking for 34-year-old Stephen Taylor Jr. of Pittsburgh. They say he was last seen driving a blue-gray 2015 Jeep Compass with Kansas tags numbered 269SCR. If you have information about his whereabouts, contact the Sheriff's Office. Missouri State University is closing its deaf and hard of hearing preschool at the end of the summer. Considering there's an overall shortage of preschools, parents who need this specific type of care are frustrated by the move. Joe Hickman has the reaction. Amelia is three and a half years old. She is profoundly deaf in both ears. Amelia is the only one of Haley Racer's three girls who is deaf and with no previous family experience dealing with hearing loss. Haley and her husband are learning sign language after enrolling Amelia in Missouri State's preschool for the deaf and hard of hearing with six other students. This has been extremely beneficial for her language development, socialization. It's just almost not fair that they're taking away this from her. The news to the families came in an email from the Associate Dean of the College of Education. Quote, due to organizational changes and upcoming renovations to the facilities, we have made the difficult decision to close the preschool at the end of this summer. This move aligns with our efforts to enhance educational offerings and support our community effectively. We recognize the importance of this program to your child's development and are committed to assisting you during this transition. We can provide a list of recommended daycares and resources to help you find suitable alternatives, unquote. There are no other suitable alternatives except for the half-day program that SPS offers for pre-K students. It's just frustrating to see 
a community who already doesn't get as much support losing more support from them. MSU said no officials were available for on-camera interviews today, but their statement to us said the undergraduate program that supports the preschool has been phased out due to lack of enrollment, and there won't be faculty to staff the preschool after this summer. Without the student support and faculty to staff, the preschool cannot remain open, unquote. Because it does need more support here than what it's getting. Well, students in Carthage today got a lesson on Hispanic culture with a presentation that included music and dancing. The students also made their own maracas out of rice and spoons. The program was presented by the community's first Latina school board member, Maria Sanchez. It is very important since Carthage we have the dual language and it's so important for us to teach it early so they can embrace with all the culture as well. The presentation was in celebration of Cinco de Mayo, which was yesterday. With the November election now just six months away, the race is on for Republican running mate for former President Donald Trump. There appeared to be something like auditions over the weekend, with growing speculation about a possible shortlist. Fox's Doug Luzader has more on some of the likely frontrunners. Now, Trump still has some time here, but the campaign is clearly trying to narrow this list down. And over the weekend, it was evident that tryouts are now underway. The former President Trump away from a courtroom over the weekend and enjoying the crowd at a Formula One race in Miami. But behind the scenes at his home in Mar-a-Lago, a stage was filled with possible running mates. And what followed were some careful comments from some of the evident contenders. Here's the good news, and I saw it this weekend. The amount of talent that we have in the Republican Party is extraordinary. There's a lot of names that are in the mix. I'm honored to have my names as one of them uh, in the mix right now. By our count, there were seven possible candidates at the Florida fundraising event. And Trump himself was asked about the process last week. Who's your favorite right now? My favorite for what? Vice President. Oh, who's my favorite for Vice President? Well, I'll be making that determination sometime prior to the convention. The Republican convention in Milwaukee this time around will start on July 15th. That gives the Trump team just over two months to vet possible candidates. One of them who has gotten a great deal of attention recently is South Dakota Governor Kristi Noem. In a book set to be released tomorrow, she writes about shooting and killing a hunting dog years ago that she described as aggressive and untrainable. As a mom, I made a choice between protecting my children and protecting them from a dangerous animal that was killing livestock and attacking yep. people. As for the VP pick, back in 2016, Trump didn't announce Mike Pence as his running mate until the middle of July. In Washington, Doug Luzader, Fox News. Well, a bit later, AI technology behind the bar. Not sure what drink you're in the mood for? A South Korean robotics company is going to help you out by scanning your face and then letting this robot take care of the rest. I'll show you how it works coming up. All right, hey guys, of course we have the severe weather which is working into the region right now. Our western counties, of course, uh, all the purple counties, we are seeing, um, hey, turn your mic off, we're getting double audio. Okay, so we are seeing um, tornado watch in effect. So across southwest Missouri, Kansas, northeastern Oklahoma, uh, all the counties in the purple, and this will get extended into our southern county. Severe thunderstorm warning. So we're looking at Allen, Neosho, a Sliver, Labette, Montgomery, Wilson, Woodson, Greenwood, Elk, Chautauqua, and then a tornado warning in Washington County in northeastern parts of Oklahoma. Look at these storms extending into the region. Now our low level jet, that's what likes to really feed these storms. It's a jet stream or a river of air in the lower levels of the atmosphere. Three, four, five thousand feet is really kicking in. And what that is doing is because it comes out of the southeast, you have these storms come out of the west, it allows storms to rotate. And that's what we're going to see as we go through the overnight hours tonight. Very electric storms. Look at all the lightning across the region. I'm going to take that off for you so you can see closer. Uh, Yates Center, you guys are getting very heavy amounts of rain gusty winds, severe thunderstorm warning. Iola, this is moving in for you right now. Let's go down to Chanute. Right on your doorstep, Erie, you guys are next. Parsons, you are in line. Let's track a little bit farther toward the west. Here's Fredonia, very heavy amounts of rain, severe thunderstorm warning, very 
strong gusty winds. So let's go down in the Odisha, which would be right here. Uh, also right on your doorstep. Let's drop a county south. Here's Independence. So you have Cherryvale, Coffeyville, Caney, and then severe thunderstorm warning once you get over into Chautauqua County. We do have a uh, tornado warning, which is moving into, it's right here, this little hook on the backside, rain wrapped tornado moving into southern parts of Chautauqua County. Let's drop south. See how this is purple? This is a large, dangerous tornado on the ground moving into Washington County in northeastern parts of Oklahoma. I kind of changed up the radar here so you can see it a little closer. Check this out. This is a very intense hook echo. So that is a rain wrapped, very large, dangerous tornado, which is going to be moving into Washington County in northeastern parts of Oklahoma. And this is kind of what we're going to see as we go through the overnight hours for us tonight. So here's our velocity. This shows us which direction the winds are going. It's kind of like a boat, green heading toward you, red heading away from you. So that's what it does to the radar. So we're seeing the intense winds. So you can see uh, the very intense winds on the front side of these storms, which are working in. And if we drop down that tornado warning, you see how it wraps into a hook and that is showing us the hook echo. All these storms pushing off toward the east. Everybody in our viewing area, meaning all the counties that are highlighted, will get severe weather tonight. All this is going to be out of here 1, 1 1.30 at the latest. So we have about three to four hours because these they're going to push through pretty quickly. Uh, it's not like the situation we had the following sat or Saturday, two Saturdays ago, where it just stuck around all night. What's up? Okay, so that means a tornado emergency. All right, so even a bigger tornado now heading toward Washington County. So we want to watch that because it's pushing into our region. All right, so look at the hail cores. It, hail's not the biggest thing tonight. It's mainly wind and it's mainly tornadoes. We're getting a lot of rotating stuff, but you can see the tracks off toward the north into the east as these push into the region. And then of course, large tornado on the ground in Washington County. All right, let's go through time here. <clears throat> so we're looking, this model always runs a little quick. So this is gonna be uh, roughly 1030. So in a 45 minutes or so. Storms getting into Fort Scott, Parsons, Oswego. This is interesting because now we're starting to get supercells that are gonna be popping up ahead of the line. Um, that's always interesting because that means it's in the warm sector and those guys like to rotate. So we wanna watch these as they get into Northeastern Oklahoma. And then of course the very intense line pushing north, right through Northeastern Oklahoma. All right, let's go through time. Main band, intense storms get through the Joplin Metro. This says about 1230. I'm thinking this is gonna be about 1145. So intense storms, Nevada, Lamar, Carthage, Neosho, down into McDonald County. Remember, our southern counties, even though you're not under a tornado watch right now, you will be as we go through the next couple hours. Intense storms continue to push off toward the south and to the east. Let's continue through time here. At this time, so this is about 1 a.m., severe threats gonna be done in Kansas, done in Oklahoma, mainly done in southwestern Missouri. We're going to be looking at uh, Tabor Rock Lake, back into Benton County, Rogers, Bentonville, Springdale, Beaver Lake, Tabor Rock Lake at about one o'clock in the morning. And then all the storms are gone. And then we start to look better. So of course, we're going to keep it here. We're streaming on the KOM YouTube. If you want to join us, you get to see kind of the behind the scenes. We're also streaming on the KOM Plus app, which we're going to be doing a ton in the future so you might as well go ahead and download it and then of course on uh koam news fox 14 as we go through the next couple hours i'm going to toss it back to tanya for a bit all right thanks doug well coming up in sports labeck county senior kate o'brien signs to play college volleyball in the four states plus pitt state softball finds out where it will play its ncaa tournament regional john dales has those stories and more up next
Early this morning, Pittsburgh State softball gathers in its team room to watch the NCAA tournament selection show. The Gorillas entering the day very confident they'll hear their name called, but not knowing what their seed would be. The Gorillas get exactly what they were hoping for. They're the number one seed and the host for the central region of the NCAA tournament, which means all of Pitt State's first, second, and third round games would be at home. After losing in the MIAA Tournament Championship and extras this weekend, the Gorillas are even more determined to finish their season strong. It wasn't a good feeling, and I think that we wore that pretty good. So, uh, yeah, it definitely gives us something to work for. We don't want that to happen again, especially on our home field. So, um, yeah, motivation for sure. Hosting is absolutely, like, amazing. I don't know if we knew that. I knew that we were going to make a regional. It wasn't an option not to make one for us. It was on our beginning of the year goals, you know, um, that we were going to have an extended season. We were going to continue to play. But getting to host is just a dream come true. In Altamont this afternoon, Labette County High School holds a ceremony for one of its top senior athletes who's going to be playing at the collegiate level right here in the four states. Labette County High School senior Kayton O'Brien signs her letter of intent to play volleyball at Coffeyville Community College. The future Red Raven says the recruiting process between her and head coach Candy Midget came together very quickly and recently. Actually, she just reached out to me not very long ago because she's a new coach there, and I was just went on a visit immediately, and I really liked the campus and stuff. I had offers for all three of my sports, and I could not pick until recently, and then I feel like I'll enjoy Caulfield the most because I love volleyball. This evening is the semifinals of the high school softball district playoffs for classes one and two in Missouri. Several of our local teams try to punch their ticket to the championship. Starting in Class 1, District 6, top seed Liberal will play for a district title. Lady Bulldogs take down Jasper 11-4 in the semifinals. Liberal plays at 5 p.m. tomorrow on its home field for the right to hoist a district championship trophy. Lady Bulldogs will face three seed Lockwood. Meanwhile, over in the Class 2, District 6 semis, Mount Vernon outlasts East Newton 5-4. Lady Mountaineers, who are the host for the tournament, advance to the district championship game. That's going to be tomorrow evening at 5.30. In that game, they're guaranteed to face a team they already played this year. And the Lady Mountaineers will face the Lady Wildcats of Diamond. They beat Lamar 8-1 in tonight's semifinal. Tomorrow's championship game between will be the third meeting between Mount Vernon and Diamond. Diamond won both of them 9-4 and 9-5, but those were back in March. That's a look at sports. Back with more news after this. The future is here with AI leading the way towards a new era of innovation. Fox Business correspondent Kelly Sabiri has more from the Automate Conference in Chicago. We are at Automate in Chicago where we are seeing the latest and greatest in automation technology. And today we are looking at Doosan from South Korea to talk about Mixmaster Moody. I have CEO William Rue with me to talk about how this works. William, what did we just do? We took a picture mm -hmm. and now we're about to get a drink made entirely by robots, right? Or cobots as you call them. Yeah. Tell me more about this. Okay. Uh, this is the, the world, the global, the number one, uh, the robot barista. And uh, the basic concept is, you know, it has uh, three different type of the new state of the technology. The one is AI. I might, we collaborate with, you know, the Microsoft ChatGPT. And uh, AI just, you know, analyzed based on the, our picture, analyze our mood. Then it gives us uh, information and, you know, the, it uh, provides the, our customized, you know, the cocktail and recipe. And afterwards, our robot, this is a cobalt. Collaborative robot is very safe and, you know, it's very similar to the, our you know, human arms. It makes, you know, the, the, uh, the cocktail and the last part, you know, if you see the, that, you know, the, uh, the hand, yeah. that is a gripper, special gripper. It is, you know, the also some garnishing. So this is totally three different new technology put together and the combination. That is a really great thing. Very fascinating. As you can see, it even garnished it. Thank you, William. Tucson also has other cobots and robot creations to satisfy your other cravings, including a cake decorating baker bot quad, as well as a barista 
for all of your caffeine. And of course, Mixmaster Moody back here will take just three minutes from start to finish to create your perfect custom cocktail. In Chicago, Kelly Saberi, Fox Business. I don't know if it could read my face. It's decision time on Farmer Once a Wife. Two remaining ladies, one last conversation and a big choice. Season finales up next. Season finales, semifinal rounds on Fox competitions and more. Here's Fox's Ashley Dvorkin with a look at what's coming up on Fox TV this week. Congratulations! A comedy and a competition hold season finales. Here's what's hot on Fox. I'm Tom, let's go! Monday, it's the MasterChef Junior semifinals with the remaining four chefs joining Gordon Ramsay in the kitchen, tasked with replicating one of his famous dishes. Then the top five dancers on So You Think You Can Dance take on a tour-themed challenge, featuring two performances for musician T-Pain. So, Doctor, do you have a diagnosis? Tuesday on The Cleaning Lady, Tony becomes an asset to Ramona, which causes a shift in their dynamic. Nolan, run! Then a father disappears from a remote campsite, and his young son fears he was abducted by aliens on Alert Missing Persons Unit. I know love and I know voices. <laughs> Wednesday, the final four take the stage on The Masked Singer and each belt out their best for a spot in the final three. Oh, no, I'm not. I'm too nervous. I'll do it. Then Grace checks her U.S. citizenship test results and Frank's investigation reaches a conclusion, all on the season finale of Animal Control. Yeah, did I tell you? Isn't this nice? That's followed by Family Guy with Peter and Lois celebrating their anniversary. You'll only have 90 minutes. Thursday, the final three dish up an exciting season finale on Next Level Chef. And one will take the winning title, 250 grand, and a year-long mentorship. I don't want to lie to you. It's also time for the farmers to make their final decisions on Farmer Wants a Wife. With two remaining ladies, one last conversation, and a big choice to make when it comes to finding love. Listen to this place. Then the action of Fox Sports presents WWE Friday Night Smackdown rounds out the week. In Hollywood, Ashley Dvorkin, Fox News. And that's our time for tonight. Thanks for joining us. We're going to leave you with video of a koala getting a little help staying cool in Australia. Have a great night and an even better tomorrow.